But that means that simplified is not Right. On this right. So, so you can have phase one here, um, phase three, and then you have um, phase 1.5, which is the combiner. Um, and so what this is doing is the same thing that you're doing in this reduced step. If you have multiple uh, key value pairs with the same word, if the word pi occurs 10 times in, in, the, in, in, this, in this block of pages that you have, then instead of sending out 10 of these key value pairs with each of them has a value one, you add up the counts and you send out one key value pair with, with the value uh, 10, right? So, so, um, so, that, so again, it's going to output one key value pair with 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 word and the and the sum of all of these values, which are so if it occurred ten times, then the value here is ten. If it occurred twice, the value here is two. And then because taking you can you've taken the sum once, you can then when you plug this into the reducer, you're going to get the same result. Yeah, so you don't need the reduce yeah. Well, you still need the reduce step because you've only handled a 10-page block of text, okay. and you have like a thousand-page book. So you have oh, okay, this fine. reducer step is taking the other 10-page blocks right. and then adding them up. Right. These were all on the same machine. So before you sent them off in the shuffle step, you want to send as little information as possible. So the the most expensive part time-wise is in moving the data in the shuffle step. You want to do this as little as possible, send as little data as possible here. Um, actually, in Hadoop, often the most time consuming part is just is loading the JVM. Um, it can take like five to 10 minutes to load up the JVM before you start anything. Um, and then it'll run in like two minutes and be done uh, sometimes. So, so, but in the MapReduce version, it's actually, um, I've, I've heard from people inside Google that there's, there's not as much of this delay. But the shuffle step where you're moving the data is then off of the bottom. So you only want to, you only do this once. Um, and then uh, you bring the things which are far apart that should be compared or aggregated together, together in the shuffle step. And you want to minimize the amount of data you have to send. Okay, so, um, so you can chain together these uh, these macro steps in some applications, and so we'll um, next next uh, next Monday we'll go through how to do MapReduce. We'll go through how to do page rank within MapReduce, and if I finish that early, I'll go through some other other examples as well. And there are, there are a few other simple examples in the in the, in the notes online um, of, of some other very simple things. And if you look up online, you can find similar uh, simple examples. But we'll go through a more complex example of page rank um, and look at some trade-offs of different ways of doing that um, on, on next Monday. So, um, so, uh, so I have a couple minutes. If you have any questions on this, how do you do recursive map reduce? Recursive map reduce. So you can think of just doing map shuffle reduce, and then the output of the reduce doing another map shuffle reduce. On. Right? So, so this is this is, is a somewhat common thing to do. A lot of the jobs just do once, but some more complex things you can't do in one round. And sometimes you try and uh, do a more complex thing in a constant number of rounds. What if one but breaks up? If what? What if one map reduce chain breaks down? What you mean if the chain breaks down? Like if one of the machines breaks? Yeah, one of the machines breaks in one because it's dead. So, so how you will the reflection. I mean, so you said that it's a consistent output for the compiler. Right. So, so you need to wait for the whole round to finish before you go to the next round. You do have a block here, and in some of these more complex rounds, you have this phenomenon called um, the curse of the last reducer, which is where one reduce one machine has a lot of the data. Say the one that has the word the has 7% of all the words it needs to process. But maybe you have a thousand machines. So each machine should have only gotten one tenth of 1%. The one with the word the has, um, has 70 times that amount of the average machine. So you need to wait for that. And now if that machine goes down, then you need to resend it to a different machine and, and try again there. 
Now, there, there are ways people have tried to, uh, there, there are certain techniques you can use to try and avoid this. And there are some uh, various algorithms that, that are, that are um, to, you know, try and take this into account. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit in this seminar I teach next, uh, next semester. Um, and maybe if, if, the, if the page rank stuff we talked about on Monday, I get done with that before the end of class, I'll talk about um, one other algorithm that tries to kind of uh, look at these problems. Um, and that's a good question. If, if one of the machine goes down, then at the mapping phase within one round, then the, the mapping this framework takes care of that. If the, 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 the central node will figure out another machine that has the same, has the replicas of the data, and it'll, it'll do that. But if you're doing multiple rounds, then it stops you have to wait. All right, so I'll see you next Monday. Yeah,